All right, 2014 Volkswagen Tiguan. We're gonna be changing out some rear rotors and pads. Before we start here, we wanna make sure that the electronic parking brake that is part of the caliper is retracted. So in order to do that, uh, there is a couple ways you can do it. I'm gonna do it the easiest way. Most of you probably aren't gonna have a scanner, but if you do, use the scanner. You go into special functions underneath of parking brake, and we can see here uh, rear brake pad replacement procedure. We're gonna hit that. Please ensure the key is on, which it is, engine off for full procedure. Press the brake pedal, cycle park brake on, then cycle park brake off and leave it in the off position. Now release the brake pedal. So we're gonna put the brake on. We're going to cycle the park brake on, then cycle the park brake off. Leave it in the off position. Now release the brake pedal. Okay. Please adhere to the proper workshop safety precautions when undertaking this procedure. Sure. We want to open the calipers. Releasing the calipers. This procedure will take approximately 30 seconds, which we heard it back all the way out. We gotta let it do its thing. It's thinking about what it wants to do next. Pondering life as a scan tool. This procedure will take approximately 30 seconds. We just went through this. Note, even if the park brake caliper motors are no longer running, the procedure has not fully completed. Please wait. And it gives me a countdown. From 40 seconds, they lied. It says 30 seconds, 40 seconds. One. Calipers are now released. Continue with pad replacement. Note, calipers can now be retracted manually as normal. Warning, please ensure the key is on the engine is off throughout the process. I do have a battery maintainer on the battery right now so that the battery does not die. And we will leave the key on as we do our brake replacement. All right, we're gonna pull this wheel off, 17 millimeter wheel bolts. <coughs> Now we need to remove these bolts. There's two bolts in the back. And we're gonna take those out. I gotta figure out what size they are. I'm gonna say they're uh, 13s. All right, 13 seems to do the trick. That was a good guess. We're gonna loosen those off, take those out. That's gonna let us take the caliper off. Oh, we should have made the video on the other side with the brake pad wear sensor. Oh, well. Uh, so we can see these brake pads are not worn out at all. But uh, that's okay. We're going to change them anyways. Somebody has replaced these and then the vehicle sat for six months and everything got really rusty. So brake pads out. Slider pins are actually free, which is amazing. Uh, now we need to take this bracket off. And by the looks of things, we have some hex key or torx. Triple square. All right, I'm gonna grab, grab a triple square. You can see uh, back here, one and two. So I'll tell you what size it is in a second. I'm gonna punch you right in the stomach. What size are they? Uh, 14 millimeter triple square or 12 point. Is there a difference? I don't think there was a difference. We tried looking that up. Anyhow, um, yep, we're gonna take these bolts out. They're probably a one time use. It's like everything on this car. I don't use it once. Here, so we just take these out of here. They're six inch long bolts, so. Holy How much corrosion built up in the hub that it, like you have to thread the damn thing out. Anyhow. Okay, so we got these off now. Uh, you can see there's some clips that get installed on here. 
And a lot of times rust will build up underneath of those and it heaves the clips upwards, which in this case, pinches the brake pad and causes them not to be able to slide very well. It constricts the movement. So we wanna make sure that those get cleaned. Also these pins, we call them slider pins. They need to be able to slide freely. These ones are nice. But a lot of time what happens is the rust will work its way underneath the seal, gets inside the bore, seizes the slider pin in place, and then what happens is the inner brake pad does all the work and the outer brake pad basically gets stuck without moving. So your brake performance gets cut in half, uh, wears your brake pads out twice as fast, and uh, nothing good. So we will... Uh, Give this a quick service. Luckily, these have been replaced not too long ago, so somebody has gone through to do all the servicing. But you can see just, you know, over the last six months, how much rust has built up on these, which is horrific. So we'll uh, give them a quick rundown with the wire wheel just to get them going. And I've got a tool. I'm gonna first try to push this caliper back with a pair of channel locks to see if that works that way. But if not, I actually have a special tool that winds the caliper back. It twists while pushing. So hopefully we can just push them back with channel locks for those of you at home that don't have the special tool. Magnet on a car that's made of plastic. Um, I'm gonna say it's probably already pushed back all the way based on these pads because they're basically new. So I don't know if we can push them back with this or not. I mean, it, it went a little bit, so I'm gonna say you probably can. I'm gonna say you can, hopefully you can. Okay, um, now's the time if you want to remove all the rust scale. If you have really rusty brakes, we're not gonna be changing the brake caliper. So now's the time to clean it up. It does have a steel piston inside of the caliper body. And once again, Rust will work its way past the rubber seal and it gets into the caliper body, into the piston bore and the piston itself. And uh, basically will cause your caliper to seize up. Once the rust gets in there, it gets all jammed around the seal. That's how you get a seized up brake caliper. So if you want, you could spend the time to clean all the rust around here, being careful not to damage this rubber dust boot. This rubber does not is not responsible for keeping the fluid inside. There's a separate O-ring seal that's on the piston inside that keeps the fluid trapped inside. This just keeps moisture and dirt and rust and contamination out of the piston bore. So important that this stays intact and does not get ripped. If it's ripped, moisture gets inside, rust happens, caliper seizes, brakes lock up, not good. So, um, now at this point i'm going to service this bracket i guess we need to get this disc off as well which i am told is a t30 torx so we will try this there we go seems to fit in there all good um and then all we need to do to take that off is just Use a little hammer action. Boom, just like that. No parking brakes inside there because the parking brakes are integrated into the brake caliper with the electronic motor. Um, you'll also want to clean the surface of this uh, flange or this uh, wheel hub. And the reason for that is we put a fresh rotor on there. It's got a fresh surface. We want two clean surfaces that made up so that the disc runs true. And then um, if you don't do that and you have a lot of rust on one side, not on the other, you may experience a brake pedal pulsation when slowing down, especially from highway speeds. So this one's already been cleaned and anti-seize has been applied. So I'm just going to leave it and we will put a fresh disc on there. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so we uh, just threw some paint on that uh, backing plate there just to try to keep it from getting any rust here. Also looks nice too, right? And we can take our new disc. How about cleaning that? This hub? Yeah, I, I mean, we're not going to clean this one, but... Yeah, yeah, I mentioned that. You want to clean it? Oh, sorry. That's all good. Uh, we have one tapered hole. 
that lines up with our set screw hole on our hub. Oops, so we can uh, just line that up, take our set screw. Up to you if you want to put some anti seize or something on there, go for it. Uh, they don't need to be installed very tight, just snug. The torque spec for these is four Newton meters, which is nothing. So we're just gonna put it in there. Boom, just like that. And even with the wheel on, like this, the screw can't come out because the wheel's in front of it, right? So even if it did come loose, it can't come out. So uh, now I'm gonna clean up this bracket and we'll get it over on the bench and clean it up. Whatever. All right, so I'm gonna remove these clips. We're gonna clean underneath there. And all I'm gonna use, seeing as the rust is somewhat minor, is this wire wheel on a drill. It's gonna work very effectively. And then there's our slider pin. They just literally pull out. We've got a rubber dust boot, keeps the moisture and all that stuff out of there. So if you're going to service these slider pins, I recommend that you clean the rubbers up nice, clean around the surface where that seals against, and same with your slider pin. You can see all the rust that's built up in here. We want to clean all that stuff out and use some synthetic silicone-based grease and uh, not petroleum-based grease. So don't do not use any anti-seize or uh, certain like lubricant sprays. Use this stuff. It's meant for slider pins. This one's by uh, Clean Flow Easy Slide. But I'm, there's a many other companies that sell it. Just make sure that it's a silicone-based lubricant. Very important. Otherwise, the rubber ends up swelling. And once that happens, the seals compromise, moisture gets in, things rust. Not good. The pin will end up seizing, and then your brakes wear out. Uh, also, for underneath of the clips themselves, there's no rubber in there, so you're okay to use anti-seize. That's fine. Just don't use anti-seize on the slider pin, I'm telling you. All right, so I'm gonna uh, just go ahead and clean this up. All right, we got new clips that come with the pads. Most pads nowadays come with new clips. So uh, we've got anti-seize all over the contacting points of where the clips sit and we just press them in there make sure that they're centered correctly they have little uh, tabs on them so they have to sit in a certain spot but make sure everything fits correctly which it looks like it does and then i'm going to apply a little bit more anti-seize on top of the clips just down in these grooves and it doesn't have to be much just a little bit that just helps lubricate the area where the brake pads are going to slide and completely up to you whether you want to do that or not some people don't like it because it attracts dirt i like it because i live in a rusty climate and it helps things slide and it's beneficial for my area um, we've lubed up the pins those are on we're ready to go install this back onto the car all right we'll get this thing set on here and we'll get our bolts started to go over to your side to be able to see. There's so much corrosion in the knuckle that it's created its own threads. All right, we're just gonna try to speed things up here with the gun. Just going snug for now and then we're actually going to hand torque everything to spec. All right, so what we need to do is torque these to 90 newton meters and then we need to do an additional 90 degree turn. That's one quarter slice of the pie.
All right, and it looks like we've got all the suspension stuff in our way, so it's gonna make the 90 degree turn real easy. I'm just kidding, I'm being sick. Boom. All right, now we do our 90 degree turn. So I'm actually gonna set this up. We need to get it set in place and then leave it still. Okay. Now these bolts are a one-time use. They're torque to yield. So every time you take them off, you have to throw them out and go buy new ones. All right. All right. So we've got our new brake pads. Looks like they're the same inside, outside, left side, right side, upside, downside. So just we're not just going to not front and back. Yeah, not front and back. Rear pads only. They just slide in like that. Do the same thing for the back one. And uh, I have come to the realization that. The brake pad wear sensor is only on the left front corner inner pad. That's it. They don't have rear sensors like a lot of the Audis and BMWs. So all good. Okay, so now we're pretty much ready to put our caliper on. I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize just in this location here and here. And same with the center on the back. Just the contact points of where the caliper is going to meet with the brake pads. And that's just going to help to reduce to reduce the risk of any kind of squealing or noises and stuff like that. So I'm going to grab some, put it on here, and we get our caliper on. All right, we just slide those on. Make sure our holes line up for our bolts. And we can throw our bolts in here. I guess I'll check and see if these are a one-time use bolts as well. It seems like with Volkswagen, anything like European cars, Volkswagen, Audi, BMW, a lot of the hardware is one-time use only. They only want you using it once, and then you gotta throw it out and go buy new hardware. So make sure when you're putting it together, obviously using new hardware and uh, do the job right the first time so you don't have to buy hardware twice. Uh, so these bolts here that hold your brake caliper on, they get torqued to 35 Newton meters for those of you that are going to do that. Okay, so we're pretty much finished up here. We're almost ready to put our wheel on. Let's just do a double check, make sure that our brake hose is not twisted up. Uh, everything's routed the way it's supposed to be and everything seems to be situated right. We can uh, give the, the disc a spin. Make sure nothing's rubbing, our backing plate isn't rubbing. And I think we're safe to say we can throw the wheel on now. I just tighten those down just snug and then we're going to do our final torque once we get the vehicle on the ground uh what were we at 130 was it 120 yeah hmm. oops 120 newton meters
We do that in a five star pattern. And then after you road test the vehicle, make sure everything is good. Retorque the wheels after 100 kilometers, whatever that is, a mile 60. Um, we need to now deal with the scan tool. So let's go do that. All right, so now to finish up, we're just going to choose to close the calipers. Here that it's wound the caliper piston in. Uh, we have to wait approximately 30 seconds. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna wait here. Okay, we've waited the time limit, so calipers have been closed. We can continue. To complete this procedure, please cycle the parking brake button after you leave this screen. Remember to press the brake pedal. We will hit continue. Press the brake pedal. Engaged. Disengaged. Engaged. Disengaged. And uh, I guess that concludes the rear brake replacement on 2014 Tiguan. Uh, if you have any questions, throw them in the comment section below. I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.